Okay guys, so we've now arrived at our second stop, which is the Nkuma Bolini. And like we did at the SCCA Tamale, we'll be doing the same here at the Nkuma Bolini. We learned a lot at SCCA Tamale. I hope you agree with me. Yes. Okay, so we'll be learning another um, exciting things about art as well at Nkuma Bolini. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready to learn something new? I can't feel your vibe. Are you ready to learn something new? Yes, please. Okay, so GN TV Junior. Great. So let's go meet our tour guide or our director, and then we will learn more about Inkuma Volini as well. But before that, do you know anything about Inkuma Volini? You have no idea. Okay, so then let's go find out what Inkuma Volini is all about. Mr. Selov, it's a pleasure meeting you once again. Thank you. We met at SCCA Tamil and you took us through the whole, I mean, art and painting we had to, I mean, know more about. And today we are here with you again at um, Inkuma Volini and we would like you to take us through all the necessary things we need to know about Inkuma Volini and anything interesting, anything educative, we are ready to learn. Aren't we? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, you're welcome to Nkuma Volini. Thank you. Um, this building was uh, one of the projects, was part of the project that Kuma, Dr., our former president, Dr. Kwame Kuma, initiated back in the 60s. Um, the idea is to create um, a food corporation that will sort of uh, buttress the national economy. So um, it's about creating a a certain kind of uh, independence, economic independence, so that we can sustain ourselves. And if we have access, we can also help our neighbors. So what happened was that uh, when he was overthrown, the project got uh, halted. And then um, this building in particular has been left unattended for more than 60 years. Um, we've through our research, we've realized that there are so many silos that were built back in the days. And um, where we are now is the one uh, which was dedicated to Tamale. And then we have some of them, the ones that we know for now, we have some of them in Ho, Takradi, Tema, Accra, Seshi, and then uh, Suedru. Uh, we are yet to do other research into um, the various regions, the other regions, and see whether we can find other silos. And um, the one in Tamale didn't go beyond the first stage, so you only have the underground or the basement and then the ground floor. The first floor was started, but couldn't, they couldn't finish it. 
So a couple of years ago, we uh, had wind of the fact that uh, this building was going to be broken down. So we intervened as an institution to acquire it. So Ibrahim lobby with um, the document of SEC and Rickley and presented his idea about having another cultural space uh, in the middle of the city. So um, in 2020, we had access to the building and then we started uh, working on it. Uh, initially when we came here, it was a bit, uh, um, it was a bit dirty, so we had to clean it up. Um, create other partitions, all the um, um, block work that you see around and the glass works were things that we have to do and some of the wooden works that you're also seeing in the building. So we don't want to kind of touch too much on the architecture, but just enhance certain key elements and also to enable people to experience the building. So it has this kind of a cover at uh, aspect to it and uh, we want to preserve, preserve it in that way. So we intend to turn this place into a museum for science and culture. And then, um, yeah, that's just a gist, a gist about the, the space. So over time, water went into the building and then uh, when we uh, got the building, we have to pull the water out and also distill it, clear all the the debts out of it. Uh, we invited a fire service to also help clean the building. And then um, afterwards, uh, we also made some few partitions and other like these ones, and also to use it for exhibition space. So basically, that's it about Nguma Boni. The name came from the inhabitants in the localities here. So they, there was a myth about the place that they thought uh, people claim that Kuma would come into, to Tamale, enter this world and appear in a crowd. So whilst we're <laughs> digging or excavating the, the underground, we were also hoping to see whether there were tunnels in, in the basement or not. So later on we go into the basement and find out if there is any secret tunnel living from here to any other place or not. But so, was there any? You'll find out for yourself. <laughs> okay, so would you like to find out? Yes. Okay, so Mr. Salom, we are ready to find out whether the tunnel leads us to Accra or not. Yes, we have one artist okay. whose work uh, is in the building. So her name is Anna Alenzo. She's a Venezuelan artist who also lives in Berlin. So she came down here, like most of the artists that you saw at SCCA and a seat family and then she came to spend some time in the building um, so her work which revolves around uh, the crisis of mining uh, or gold mining and uh, oil industry things that she has been studying or, or areas that she has been studying for some time now so she make her work based on that as a response to um, those crises that we have and in this building we see Peculiar sculptures, sculptures that are motorized, uh, and also we see um, photographs and videos, and also some installation. There are videos here too. Yes. Okay. Um, so that's just um, about it. For. So let's go and find out. Right. Shall we? Okay. Are you ready? Okay, let's go have some fun and educate ourselves as well. So we have some of the sculpture pieces around here. Um, so uh, this one is motorized and it sort of link the ground floor to the basement. So when you are here, you see the sculpture in a different way. When we go into the basement too, you see the sculpture in another way. You can't be at two places at the same time. <laughs> Unless you probably have uh, two technology, you might see what's in the basement. But she intentionally made it so that this way, so that you can go from here, you can go into the basement and experience the basement and look at the works too. Okay, so if I turn on the power. <laughs> um,
okay. Um, so what's going on is that she borrows certain elements of some of the machines that are used in illegal mining. So, or even in mining itself. So you see that this band, which goes in and out, I don't know whether you've ever been to the mill, grinding mill. You see that there's this black band that's rotating, connecting to two uh, elements that's rotating. So this one is motorized. This is the motor that powers um, this wheel to go, and the band goes in and out. So due to the motion, or due to electricity that converts it into motion, uh, kinetic energy, then it goes in and out. Do you get it? It's the same principle. So this, some of those components are on the, some of the machines that you find when you go to a mining site or illegal mining site. So, so the sculpture is uh, borrowed from that. So it, she gives you hints about some of the things you might see over there, but, and also not exactly the same thing. So you have to use your imagination to complete, complete for yourself. Okay, shall we? We, we have certain images around here. You have, uh, I told you about the fact that we are going to see photographs, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So this is one, uh, one of them. So this photograph, for instance, you see that um, there's a bigger machine that people are using. You know that illegal, in money we have two types, mm -hmm. large scale money and small scale money. The small scale one, we know that uh, we also have people who did not have permission, but they are into mining. Mm -hmm. Those who call Galamsey. Yeah. Uh, so, but we, we are also experiencing some, a different situation in Galamsey now. We have certain, uh, we have people who have come to the country and are also doing gal the Galamsey, which is affecting us one way or the other. So, um, the machine that they are using has this kind of, uh, a small, they are bigger and they are uh, more efficient than the local ones that they, the ones that they, the local guys have prefabricated or sort of uh, improvised. So they, as they have bigger machines, the land is also getting deteriorated or depleted with time and faster. Yeah, and you can see that they are taking the forest and doing the galamsey. Eventually, there are certain element things that go into it, exploitations of the local guys and so on. There are so many things that are. You can make or make relations out of this single image here. Yeah. Okay. In the same site that she went to do the research, you see that this is these are some of the machines that the local guys are using here. Okay. And I was talking about the band. That's the band that she sort of appropriated, made it, uh, exaggerated it, or made it into another form. Of course, there are, there are certain more tools that are on it, but she just gives you a hint yes. about some of the things that you might find on Galam site. They usually call this chamfer machine. Yeah, yeah. So you can see that. Did you all hear him? Yes. What did he say? Chamfer machine. I, I hope that's the correct pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> so they are in the thick forest, and then they dig from one site to the other in search of gold. So you see pockets of land that have been uh, dug and then uh, in the course of it the water body gets polluted and they use very dangerous chemicals sunlight mercury which are dangerous to dangerous for for all of us and all living matter in the in, in the in the rivers i said earlier on that sculptures are made in three-dimensional yeah. so the one we saw at the SCC was standing on something over here, this one is hanging. So she wants you to make, sorry, she wants you to pay attention to the architecture. So when you come closer, there's this, through the um, transparent roof, light comes from the building, uh, from the top of the roof, and then falls on this. And when it falls on this, it gives you, uh, through that force on certain material, that's also, um, that will reflect or, how to call it sentience, and probably draw you from afar to the, to the work. And also, uh, it leaves shadows on the ground, so it's like she's dealing with the whole space. So from the top to the work and also the shadow, everything is considered. Do you get it? So you, you realize that over here, just some few works are put over here. 
to allow you to also experience the building, the way the build, the character of the building is. If you put so many things over here, it will be lost. The nature of the building will be lost. So she was smart enough to find pockets of or places that are quite interesting. That will give another, or that will heighten this, her sculpture or make them uh, more interesting. Shall we? So we are going to the basement. We are in the basement. What happened was that because the building has been left unattended for more than 60 years, uh, water was water entered into the building. The walls of the building became weaker, so weaker. So water entered into the building. And um, if you look up, the black line that I see running along the wall uh, is the level of the water. So you imagine that if by mistake you fall here, that's it for you. If you don't want to swim, like me, then that's it for you. So um, the local government at the time, realizing that um, there was so much in water in the building and then because people were coming to fetch water here during the dry season um, it can also be dangerous to the population so they sort of pour a lot of tracks of um, sand into the building to seal it not knowing that it was much more much more deeper than they they had imagined so this they stop at a point we have to dig all of that out of the building. You were saying that um, the, I mean, people in the town were fetching water from here. As at the time they were fetching the water, was it healthy enough? What they were fetching because it was dry season. They were fetching because it was dry season. There was no water in the neighborhood, uh, so the the only source of water was here. Yeah and they have to treat it later on. Please, how did they get to this space? Looking at the percentage of the water here. What happened was that um, there were certain pockets of, or there were certain spaces that were around. So they maybe stand with, yeah, around it and fetch. Have you seen this side? Yeah. Oh, we have to break it. So it's open and then the government sealed it. When we started digging, we noticed that there were other living organisms in the building, like uh, toads, fishes, bats, um, snails, and others. Even owls were in the building. So what happened that the owls found their ways out, uh, out of the building. The bats are still here, and the fishes and toads are in a pond close nearby. Um, yeah, but. The fish, for instance, doesn't come up in daytime, maybe at night, or even when throw some food stuff before us. They are mud fish, and they are as big as this size, two of them. And uh, when you go inside, you see some bats. Oh, I wanted to keep this as a secret. So the bats, no, they are fruit bats. It's their poop, their poop and also their urine that's creating this kind of uh, nauseating uh, or this thing in the, in the space. I talked about the fact that um, during the illegal money, there are certain processes that are involved. So you have, what the artist did was to creatively pick certain aspect of the mining process and create certain sculptures based on that. So things that you find in the mining side, because the motorized machine, uh, the machines are motorized, so they spin. So she, what she did was to create situations whereby you find certain element of the mining process. So over here, you have a pan that contains the, the soil. So the idea is that there's gold in in the soil. You call it gold ore. It's, the gold is mixed with the with the with the ground with the soil. So through, the, and then they have to wash it. Um, uh, how do you call it? 
they have to break this lump into a final one so that maybe the gold particle can be um, separated from the from the sun later on there's another process whereby they, they it has to be sieved or there are certain uh, maybe sponge or whatever traps it so all this is presented to you in a certain peculiar way for you to make your those relations for yourselves okay any question yeah please is there any form of gas um producing this light here no these are more of uh, cylinders one thing about i told you that she's into oil she's also looking at uh, the oil oil industry and we all know that oil has to do when you're talking about oil the oil industry we are talking about crude oil the one they extract from maybe the bottom of the sea or maybe in the desert and it's black afterwards they treat it and you get petrol and diesel out of it in the refinery so she doesn't want to do a work which is a gold mining and oil uh, oil industry so she picks certain elements like for instance the barrel contains it's used to contain maybe just gives you an idea of maybe the oil industry yeah like extracting of oil and putting them into barrels so she combines those elements in in her work instead of using the wooden structure that was used in um, at SCCA she rather improvise and use things that are connected to uh, the oil industry so uh, you can realize that her works revolves around those two um, areas shall you go to the other side this is what you saw at the top that was spinning do you get it so that, that was spinning so the way you see it over here is different from the way you see it at the top uh, just like the light that you saw and you're asking a question about whether it's, it's there's a gas no it's electricity connected to the top over there so this this sort of highlight it uh, for you to see that uh, it's shiny like gold and also since bats are living in the building we don't want to put so much light in the building because they don't like uh, yeah god has designed their eyes to see in darkness so light affects their eyes so we um she was conscious of that and put up lights uh, that are a bit subdued just to illuminate some of the sculpture pieces and then you have uh, over here the lights it's not here but you also have something that's connected to the oil industry because this is used in the in the communities yes this is used yes wait 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 <laughs> let me talk about this and then we go to the back so you have this that's used for oil so as you can see here the sculpture sort of just depicts something that has to do with oil, or the oil industry. Okay, so yeah, it's, yeah, these are measuring cans for maybe engine oil or any other material, maybe petrol, yeah, engine oil. Yeah, so you can see the bats, they are activated, or how will I say, they are animated because of the light. They don't like light, but in the evening when you come here, they will just move on their own, flying in the space and sort of. Uh, I told you that this is a museum for science and culture, right? So, but by but have, living here is also already deals with biology, ecology, and things like that. So, we don't know much about them. They are here for studies and then to learn much more uh, about them. We are told that their poops can be used for maybe uh, fertilizer and so on. So, yeah, there's much more to learn from them than being scared of and they were living here before we came so instead of sucking or killing them you want them to be they have their own space they won't do anything to you <laughs> they won't even come closer to you okay all right shall we so we gently walk outside we gently walk outside and these are fruit bites uh, sorry fruit bats um they don't bite uh, i think they also feed on insects who has any question about the bat? So please, how was the bats able to get like yes? Oh, the the whole place was dark, so bats live in dark spaces. So daytime, this place was convenient for them to re relax. Do you get it? 
yeah there, there was no lights coming in the building so they just found their way like it was it became a home for them for them so they, they've been living here for who knows how many years now so we as human beings interested in ecology yes so please how was the bat able to use their leg to st- stack on the wall wow. that's a very scientific question that i may not be able to answer you okay, um, but that's how they they yeah that's how they also sort of live they find a way to um kind of uh, sustain themselves next week on tamale experience Can we eat share butter?